Get your stuff, man. Come over. Stay with me. Thanks, Wes. I appreciate it, but uh, I'll be all right. Wait, 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 wait. Come on, man. I'm telling you, I got a rent control loft. Boom. Plenty of room. Really? Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Done. I'm almost done painting it. So, what bed do you want? Nostromo or Titan A? Right. Look at I've heard this all before, huh? Dump it. Roop it. Shh. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, just dump it all and make sure you get me a good price. I'll talk to you in a bit, huh? After the picnic, you take me to Barney's. They have big sale on keels. Oh, well, honey, I, I mean, I don't want to, but this thing just came up at the office, and I've got to get back there Something soon. always coming up. I promise. Uh, next week, when, uh, when Sylvia's out of town again, I promise. Okay. Please don't pick it up. Huh? I brought you goulash. Yeah, hello? 
Well, it's about friggin' time you called me back. Listen, I want to make this perfectly clear to you, right? I uh, requested and paid for walnut trim, and you gave me cherry wood. You didn't bring the diet? Yes, of course, I'm still here. I'll go get it for you. Yeah, and see if you can get a cup of ice while you're at it. I mean, I ordered that car custom. The upholstery matches the walnut trim, not the cherry. I mean, it looks like a pit mobile. What the hell do you expect me to do? Bad cup, please. I can have your whole family wipe off the face of this earth. You got any ice? You got any colder? Uh, this is good. Give me change, please. Rupert! Rupert! Okay, ladies, slow down. Exactly which one of the Baldwin brothers is eating your pets? So, you're telling me you guys are going to be roommates now? Yeah, it's temporary, you know, until I get a place of my own. Hey, yo, Tuck. Hey, man, you can stay with me as long as you want. No problem, man. You know, me and you, we're gonna be like Felix and Oscar, you know, Sanford and Son. Laverne and Shirley. Okay. So, what happened with the ghost? Oh. Uh, Tuck's still suffering from a bit of post-supernatural stress disorder. The thing was so angry. They're always angry, Tucker. Yeah, and it probably didn't help that it was haunting an Arby's. Ew. Ew. But then it slimed me with some sort of strange goo. Yeah, that's called ectoplasm. And then, and then it just, I mean, it blasted out of there, so. So your story just upped and left? Well, what are you gonna work on now? I don't know. Ah, uh, Tucker, you're new here, so let me give you a little piece of advice. If you don't want Donald to stick you with the dog, then you gotta come up with something on your own. Oh, okay. Well, do you have any leads? Yeah. None that I'm going to share with you. Gracie Hall, always trying to hook herself up with the cover. Hey, Les. Hey, what's up, Vera? Hi, handsome. Hi. Oh, Grace, I confirmed the little girl from Poltergeist is, in fact, dead. Damn. Thank you. What? OK, well, what's going on? Oh, well, let's go find out. is suspected in the disappearance of Rupert Blackstone, head of DBC, one of the largest media conglomerates in the world. Oh, my God. Earlier, we spoke to his friend, supermodel Valevska Poliskova, who was with him in this midtown park just moments before he mysteriously disappeared. I don't know what happened. He was right there. I see nothing good. Police officials confirm they have yet to receive ransom demands, and as they continue to search for clues in this bizarre, bizarre disappearance, the only thing we can say with certainty at this point is that the picnic is over. Back to you, Chuck. Hey, who turned it off? I did. Why? Missing media honchos. Not our territory. Let's get to work, people. Let's get started. I had a very disturbing call this morning from the attorneys of a Ms. Cleo, the psychic, from those late-night infomercials. They were complaining about obscene calls she received from this office. Anyone care to fess up? Well, I was just giving her and her Jamaican accent a piece of my mind. That was supposed to be my psychic phone line. I mean, that's true. Ruby's been saying them cards don't lie ever since I started. Get over it. If you want to harass someone for $2.99 a minute, you do it on your own time and dime. Fine. But her and Dion got it coming. Ruby, moving on. Great. What have you got? There's this chick in Tennessee who had half her brain sucked out by a dental aspirator. Ouch. She was right in the middle of getting her teeth bleached. Damn. Guess them coffee stains ain't looking too bad no more. Medical negligence or supernatural phenomena? I have my people checking as we speak. I like it. You have something by the weekend? Absolutely. OK. Now, a uh, new guy, uh, Tucker. A little bird tells me that your story is a big, fat bust. It didn't go well, no. I don't know how the hell you let that one get away without even a half-decent quote, but 
Don't make a habit of it, understood? Yes. I have something here I think you'll be able to breeze through. Minnie's chips, they come in naturally occurring funny animal shapes. Find out why. <laughs> You're kidding me, right? No. Donald, one of the richest, most powerful men in the city's disappeared. I mean, it's all over the news. And, and you're telling me you want to you ignore that and dedicate coffee space to, to potato chips? Potato chips. Tucker, for all we know, that salty starch is a sign of impending apocalypse. A strange genetic mutation caused by unseen extraterrestrial bacteria. Or maybe, just maybe, it might be the next evolutionary step for a root vegetable hell-bent on taking over the world. Don't dismiss the chips. This meeting is over. Let's get to work. No, please. Just let me give the Blackstone story a shot. As I said, we don't report on kidnappings unless they have that chronicle twist. This does not qualify. Where does he get off like that? I know, I know. He could be a pain in the ass sometimes, but you can't diss Donald, man. The man knows what he's doing. Yeah, I'm not totally convinced about that yet. <laughs> I mean, what's his deal, anyway? What do you mean? I mean, where's he from? How did he get this place running? Well, he started publishing in the early 80s. That was after he came back. Came back from where? Nobody knows, you know? He was a legit journalist for the longest time, and then he disappeared for, like, five or six years, you know? Everybody thought he was dead, and then when he finally reappeared, the moment he came back, boom, had all this cash. Open up the Chronicle. Really? Yeah. Any yeah. idea what happened? Nope. Thank you. Hey, don't ever think of bringing that up. He doesn't like to talk about the past. I think you've BW seen its last close encounter. Great. <coughs> Where's the potato chip woman live again? We're gonna make another stop first. Oh, what are we doing here? Checking things out. Yeah, but I thought Donald I told know. you. I know. Press. Oh, we're on Chronicle, like that paper. Yeah? Yeah, makes good toilet read. Until I use it to wipe my hey, officer, I take offense to that. <laughs> Tucker Burns. Kristen. So Columbia let you graduate after all. I was sitting next to you at commencement. Oh, maybe your ego is obstructing the view. Or maybe it was that unfortunate haircut you had. Nice improvement. Mm, likewise, I can't even see your roots anymore. Oh. So were you here for the press conference? Yeah. Yeah, uh, what do you think? Definitely a kidnapping. There's signs of a struggle and his phone was left behind, but the cops can't seem to find footprints other than his and that Slovakian boat show model he'd been sleeping with. Hmm. What do you think? Oh, you know, kidnapping, no doubt. This is my photographer, Wes Freewald. Hi. Hey, what's up? So where are you working? Newsweek. Really? Yeah. How long? Oh, a year now. Wow, that's fantastic. Glad to see you moving ahead. Thank you. I hope they got a good fact checker there. Well, you know, probably not as good as one at the New York Times, but uh, guess what? I didn't need my daddy's connections to get me a job there. Oh, well, I didn't need them to get promoted either. I got that on my own. Oh, what the hell was that all about? She was my rival at the school paper. You know when my uh, student Pulitzer was rescinded? Mm -hmm. Guess who got it? I should have her job, Wes. Yeah, but you don't. Now, can we please go see a lady buy some potato chips or what? Follow me. Wes, keep a lookout. Boys got cojones. Signal we last call. 
Oh, Tucker, could you bring your ass out here, please? Yeah. The guy was an a-hole. It says right here in his paperwork he wanted a cherry trim interior. It wasn't our screw-up. Okay. Hey, how much is a lease on this one? About 600 clams a month. So, uh, what was the last thing you heard? Nothing. He was screaming at me. His cell phone reception started cutting out. Then he was gone. How about the X5 here? It's more. Hey, listen, guys. I went through this with the cops already. I got to get back to work. You know, I got an old bat on hold who can't figure out how to use the freaking windshield wipers. <laughs> okay, well, thanks for your help. Come on, Wes. Hey. Uh, one more thing. Do you guys record your calls? Yeah, sure. I feel bad for the kidnappers. Shh. Now you Papa? people better resolve this thing right now. You people better resolve it right now. You're cutting out again. Donald wants to know how your story's going. It's going. Uh, let's rewind and amplify the tale. Burr? You people better resolve this situation right now. That is not a pretty sound. Let me hear that again a little louder this time. Dr. Weiler. Andy, why the hell are you calling me on this phone? Listen, I think I'm being followed. Hello? Hello? The last time Aaron Roberts saw his parents alive, they were boarding this very ship. His family. This very ship. His family missing. One of the most. The dental hygienist didn't even realize what happened until she cleaned out the aspirator and found chunks of cerebellum. Oh. What happened to the woman? She went back to work the next morning at Starbucks. Nobody noticed. <laughs> hey, doll. This fax just came for you. Mm, thanks, girl. Grace, hmm? you got food in your hair. Hey. Hey. Nothing. NYPD missing persons department? Mine? Business or personal? Business. Really? Missing persons isn't exactly the first place I'd go to research a story on potato chips. 
Look, if you have to know, there's something really strange going on about this Rupert Blackstone disappearance. Really strange. And I just want to see if anyone else has gone missing. Tucker, if you're assigned a story, you do it. Donald isn't exactly big on insubordination. Since when is investigating a lead considered insubordination at a newspaper? This isn't the New York Times, Tucker. Yeah, well, maybe that's the problem, Grace. I'm... Look, I think there's something really big here, all right? I'm supposed to just sit back and ignore it and work on some crap assignment? How's it coming? World coming Terrific. Did you interview uh, Minnie yet? Yeah, I'm working on it. What's that? Oh, those are mine. Don't forget we have a deadline. Yeah, I'll have something for you. Thank you. Mm. Guess it's back to the potato chips. Hey, Tucker, all of these names were filed at least a month ago. Except for one. Last night in Manhattan, a Dr. Weiler. Okay, maybe there is something to this. Just promise me that, you know, if it's a dead end, you're gonna give it up. I promise. Who called it in? Uh -oh. Dr. Weiler told me that he was being followed. And then the phone started breaking up, and then he was gone. That's when I called the cops. This is the kind of phone he was using? Yeah. Yamaguchi 9000 satellite phones. It's the first cell phone you can use anywhere on the planet. Yeah? That's cool. Can I buy one from you right here? Not for sale to the public yet. So how come people already have them? Just employees and some investors in Yamaguchi. Look, I don't know what happened to Dr. Weiler. Maybe he's fine. Maybe I just panicked. But he hasn't shown up at work. Any idea why someone would want to hurt him? No. How's it going, Andy? Good, Mr. Bailey. Any word from Weiler yet? No. Hello? Hi. Hi. Anything I can do for you? The technology behind the Yamaguchi 9000 is a sum of years of work. It was my ultimate dream when I started this company. A cell phone you could literally use anywhere. A remote island in the South Pacific. The top of Mount Everest, from a plane in mid-flight to a submarine submerged deep in the Arctic. So who's Yamaguchi? The name Bailey's was already taken, as you well know. We did some marketing research. The word Yamaguchi suggested advanced technology, attention to detail. A little Japanese-American ice skater? We were around before her. So Dr. Weiler is your head researcher for the 9000 Project. That's right. I never asked you for your credentials. I'm assuming if I called Newsweek. They'll know exactly who we are. The nurse. I have a meeting to attend. If you find anything out, please let me know. We're extremely worried around here. That was the same exact phone Rupert Blackstone had on him. With all that money, I bet she's an investor. Now, was it me or was that assistant a little nervous? <laughs> he was practically beating his man. Yeah, why? Wes, you have a map? Do you want a global continental U.S. tri-state area? Manhattan will be fine. Big Ben? Ben would be great. All right. Weiler lives here, all right? If he was walking from work, the quickest way to his apartment would be this. Hey, hey familiar territory. Same place Rupert disappeared. Hey, Tuck B, 9 o'clock. Kristen? Uh, Tucker. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? You typically answer a question with a question. Well, no Shh. need to beat around the bush. You obviously found the Rupert connection as well. He's an investor. Was. He dumped all his stock in the company yesterday. Hi, Kristen March. Grace Hall. Work at Newsweek, too? Apparently so. Hey, Wes. Listen, Tucker. There's no point in harping on a rivalry we had in school, for God's sake. We're in the real world now. I agree. So, fresh start. A few of the editors are having a party tonight. Downtown, free booze, Japanese finger foods. Should be a blast. You're welcome to come. Okay, thank you. New York Times party invite. Why do you feel they need to lie, Tucker? No, Kristen and I have a history. I mean, if she found out I worked at the World Chronicle, I'd never hear the end of it. So what are you doing hanging out with us? You slumming? 
No, that's that's not what I mean. This whole thing is a ticket out of here for you, isn't it? No, listen, a story's a story. All I want to do is find the truth, whatever it is. So both of these guys were in the park, right? Let's right. go check it out. All right. What do you think? Sinkholes? Gophers? Hey! Yeah, I found another one over here. Is that your phone? No, mine's on vibrate. Hey, hurry up before it goes to voicemail. Okay, this officially nixes our gopher today. Yeah. Anything you don't have in that bag? Yeah, my wallet can pay for lunch. So that's the phone Dr. Wilder left behind. Some nerve, kid. I give you an assignment and you toss it out like a piece of moldy bread. And then you start tracking the very thing I specifically told you to stay away from. Donald, will you look at I am not finished. And you two, you facilitated this. I'm impressed. This is exactly the kind of chutzpah we need a lot more of around here. Okay, you guys get started right away and I'll push Minnie to next issue. What's wrong, Tucker? Uh, just when I thought I was working on a real legitimate story, <laughs> I get an underground monster. A story is a story, Tucker. It's about finding the truth, remember? So? Oh, I hate to break it to you, but you got cancer. What? You heard me. That thing is a piece of malignant organic matter. A tumor? Basically. Well, what the hell's a tumor doing crawling up my leg? Better yet, what's a tumor doing underneath Manhattan? Now, tumors are really nothing more than exponentially multiplying abnormal cells. That thing could have started out as single-celled evolutionary gack. It just grew over millions of years by angiogenesis. By angio who? Angiogenesis. It's the process by which tumors increase their blood supply. So what does it have to do with these phones? Yeah, you know, I'm gonna go to that New York Times party. Oh, yeah? Well, have fun. We'll be here playing with chunks of cancer if you need us. 
I know Kristen. And if she knew about the Yamaguchi connection, I bet my life she found something out. That girl could squeeze blood out of a turnip. Hey, I like turnips. Hey, you like pork rinds? Oh, my bad. Oh, you made it. Yes, I told you I would. Long day at the office? Yeah, you could say that. Hey, uh, how was your visit to Yamaguchi? Hmm, informative. Tucker, maybe you know my editor, John Wallace. I don't believe I do. He just moved over from Newsweek a couple of months ago. Tucker's been there for a year now. Really? Reporter? Yes. I'm surprised I don't recognize you. I mean, not that large of a staff. Well, who do you work for there? Mendelssohn? Carter? Nichols? Sorry, Kristen, I lied to you. I don't work there. I'm... Okay, uh, where are you at then? The World Chronicle? Well, gotta go mingle. Good luck there, son. Give me a call if you happen to run into Elvis. Oh, my God. What? The Wappinger Indians. They were this tribe inhabiting what's now New York City before it was colonized by the Dutch. They had a myth about a man-eating underground creature they called Ehosotahe Hove, roughly translated little ugly dirt monster. Mm. Oh, my God. No wonder they sold Manhattan for only 24 bucks. They were laughing at us behind our backs. Hey, hey. The thing only appeared during periods of intense atmospheric radiation, sunspots and the like. Other times, it apparently went into remission. It's just me calling. <sighs> that ring is so annoying. Look at that. See? It's just exactly what I thought. When the phone is on standby mode, it's perfectly okay. It's only when it's ringing or somebody's talking on it that it begins to act as a beacon. What do you mean a beacon? Let me see. Okay, too much information. This thing is a mating signal. Oh. Okay, maybe not. Uh, Sal, why is this tumor so into phone sex? Why'd you lie to me? Isn't it obvious? You always answer a question with a question? It's rhetorical. It doesn't count. Tucker, you would have saved yourself a hell of a lot more humiliation had you just been clean with me from the start. Would I? Kristen, this was the only job I could get out of college. I mean, I can't even begin to tell you how many publications I applied to. I know what you went through in school. I know you're not at the Chronicle by choice. That's partially true. Look, I meant what I said about putting the past behind us. Truce. Truce. Let me ask you a question. Did you find out why Blackstone sold his stock? No. Kristen, I can see right through you. Why are you so interested in this? It doesn't exactly strike me as fodder for a supermarket tabloid. It's a little difficult to explain, but I need to know. Well, I guess it's not going to hurt me to tell someone from the Chronicle. No offense. Oh, none taken. Promise me you won't tell anyone? I promise. All right. Blackstone got an anonymous tip that something was wrong with the 9,000s. I called the head of research, Dr. Weiler. The guy is missing. I know. But his assistant, Andy, was very helpful. I batted my eyelashes, pouted a little bit, and he gave me his whole life story. He told me about some documents Bailey ordered destroyed. Evidence that the phones emit huge amounts of radiation. That's what allows the phones to work anywhere. These things make cigarettes look like Tic Tacs. 
God. Andy also thinks Bailey had Wyler killed because he was about to blow the whistle. We're gonna meet up tomorrow morning and he's gonna give me everything that he's got. Well, Kristen, we have to stop these phones from being sold. Well, Tucker, they go on the shelves tomorrow morning. Tucker. Listen to me, all right? This is a matter of life and death. We have to stop these trucks from leaving here. Life and death. John McQueen, I hate to break it to you, but that was the last truck. All the phones are gone. It's grown, and it feeds off radiation. OK. Uh... Tomorrow morning, people are going to start buying these phones. And they're going to walk around the city talking on them. And that thing's going to keep killing and growing. What are we going to do? I don't know. How's the weather in Miami right now? May I make a suggestion? Go ahead. I've been doing some experiments in my spare time on the effects of intense chemotherapy on non-malignant vermin brain cells. You know, just for fun. Anyway. I got enough of this stuff piled up to blast that carcinogenic mother right into oblivion. Okay, let me get this straight. You want to chemo the tumor monster to death? Well, listen, it's just a suggestion. I like it. We need to get more phones. And then we can go down to the sewer and ambush this thing. How do you propose we do that? I have somebody in mind. Curious as well. Had your credentials checked out. Newsweek never heard of you people. Listen, we know about the phones, Bailey. Been blowing a little whistle, Andy. There's nothing wrong with the phones. They're perfectly safe. And you're not going anywhere with them. Listen, you can have a lot of blood on your hands unless you let us take these phones. Do you think I'd be standing here surrounded by them if there was anything wrong with them? Great. My last name just became Silkwood. Turn these off, Bailey. These phones are going to revolutionize the telecommunications industry. Sure, there's a few kinks to be worked out, but so what? What new invention doesn't have a bug or two to be solved? Turn these off, Bailey. Oh, my God, it's here. What? What is? Oh. 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 That's what your ass looks like, huh? Bailey, look out! He says it keeps the public guessing. I like that sidebar, too. Yeah, but I had to make a difference. Mm -hmm. Hey, Tucker. I think you should come and see this. We're standing in front of the world headquarters for Yamaguchi Wireless. 
subject today of an explosive piece in the New York Times alleging their new 9000 model is a virtual radiation time bomb. Standing with me now is the writer of the article that is shaking up the wireless phone industry, Kristen Martin. Kristen, how did you manage to uncover this damaging information? Well, you could say that I had my own personal deep throat working within the company. Is it true that Frank Bailey, founder and president of Yamaguchi, has not been seen in over a week? Yes, he disappeared the night before the phones became available to the general public. Any ideas to his whereabouts? Well, I believe the FBI is investigating that right now. If you bought one of these phones, do not, I repeat, do not use them. They are considered extremely dangerous. A huge corporate class action lawsuit in the making, thanks to this reporter right here. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you. Back to you, Chuck. <laughs> it was wonderful. You know, but I wrote the real story. You know what I got? Three crank calls and a death threat from a crazy lady who claims she's the creature's love child. Hey, Tucker. If it's any consolation, we know who deserves all the credit here. And the readers of our paper do as well. Thank you. Thank you, boys. That. Not a chance. <laughs> a soft, soaked, searched, and stomped on. Four hours a night. Four nights in a row. It's definitely gonna hit us! Remain indoors. <laughs> Sits down in dirty movies. Celebrating Mother Earth. Sort of. Global warning continues with Asteroid Parts 1 and 2. Tonight, starting at 7 on Sci-Fi. Episode 2, Attack of the Clones, opens in 10 days. To celebrate, join Lucasfilm, Adam Films, and Sci-Fi for the first ever Star Wars Fan Film Awards, hosted by Kevin Smith. Sunday at 8 p.m., only on Sci-Fi. Let's go to uh, Shizuan Lele down the street. Yeah, I like Empire Shizuan a little better. Great orange chicken. Chew that, chew that. All right, you got it, man. Hey, man. What'd you think? You stay for a long term? <laughs> sure. I mean, where else can you have such a good time? Good, because we're going to have to start discussing and splitting the cable bill. You're talking about the apartment. What's I'm talking about the apartment? What are you doing so much? <laughs> yeah, Wes, I'm, I'm staying long term. Yeah? Yeah. My man. <laughs> <laughs> Tucker Burns and West Freewell, roommates. Hey! Yo, yo, I'm right here! Would you... Who the hell had my ride, Toad? I did. You joking, right? It is headed for the junkyard where it belonged. Why would you do something like that, Donald? If you have any trouble with the color, tough. It was either that or uh, lemon lime. <laughs> Next on Sci Fi, The Chronicle. Exit reality. Enter Sci-Fi with Sci-Fi Magazine, your total guide to Sci-Fi entertainment. This issue, Star Wars Episode 2 and the Farscape Season 3 finale. On sale now or call 1-800-77-SCI-FI to subscribe. Sci-Fi Magazine.